Dear all, welcome uh, to this new NephroTube lecture. In this lecture, we will cover clinical tips uh, about urinary tract infection. Uh, as I always uh, say at the beginning of uh, all my lectures, that you can find uh, the recorded lectures of NephroTube at the YouTube channel NephroTube, the PowerPoint of the presentations on nephrotube.com. You can join the Facebook group with, uh, which contains more than uh, 16,000 uh, uh, physicians. Most of them are nephrologists. You can follow the Facebook page and Twitter account. Let's start the lecture. Um, this is my talk outline. I will start by terminology, roots, and predisposing factors of uh, urinary tract infection. Uh, we have uh, three terminologies or um, regarding UTI classification, we can classify it into three uh, categories. The first one is by pyelonephritis, where there is upper urinary tract infection in the kidney and ureter. Then we have cystitis, which is considered as a lower urinary tract infection involving the urinary bladder. And finally, urethritis which is also considered a lower urinary tract infection involving the urethra. What are um, the other um, terminology or classification that we need to know in urinary tract infection is to know whether the urinary tract infection is complicated or not. We say acute uncomplicated cystitis, or it is also called simple cystitis, if the UTI, especially if it is in the bladder, is in an immunocompetent host with normal urinary tract anatomy, there is no abnormality in the urinary tract and the patient is not immunocompromised. The patient has good immunity and good urinary tract. We will call it acute uncomplicated cystitis. But we say complicated urinary tract infection if the patient uh, has uh, or is receiving or is in severe immunosuppression, or if there is anatomical abnormalities of the uh, urinary tract. So we classified now urinary tract infection according to the site and according if it is complicated or not. The second point we have to know uh, is the route of infection. The infection of the urinary tract uh, more commonly is through an ascending root and less common through the hematogenous root where bacterial infection uh, comes from the blood regarding the ascending root it is the usual mechanism of infection where uh, there is bacteria colonizing the urethra or periurethral spaces and then these bacteria will migrate upward into the bladder causing inflammation the bacteria that is colonizing around the urethra is usually from the GIT, from the gastrointestinal system. They are collectively called enterobacterials, and the most common examples are Escherichia coli, Klebsiella, and Proteus. So these bacteria colonizes around the urethra or the periurethral space. Then, by ascending route, they reach the urinary tract, causing urinary tract infection. The next point is what are the factors predisposing to urinary tract infection? Females are more common to be affected by uh, urinary tract infection, especially in pregnancy. And a female with, or any a person with a previous urinary tract infection, is always at risk to get new urinary tract infection. Also, immunocompromised patients with poor immunity, patients with diabetes, especially uncontrolled diabetes, are at risk for urinary tract infection. If there is abnormality of the urinary tract, especially, or for example, kidney stones, the presentation of instrumentation in the urinary tract as urinary catheter, sexual intercourse, and using of spermicides which kill the uh, lactobacilli, the bacterial biofilm that protect the genitalia. So these are the predisposing factors 
to urinary tract infection. So after covering the introduction about the terminology, roots, and predisposing factor, we will start about diagnosis, how to diagnose urinary tract infection. And I will start with the use of urine dipstick. Urine dipstick can inform us with multiple information. I will discuss in details now uh, all the information related to the urinary tract infection that we can get from the urine dipstick. And I will start by leukocytes. Uh, usually, if, there is, if uh, there is neutrophils and macrophage in the urine because of infection, this new, these neutrophils and the macrophage will release leukocyte strays enzyme. And leukocyte strays will cause a change in the color of the dipstick, indicating a positive leukocyte strays test. And this indicates that there is infection. But an important point to mention that there are certain factors that prevent the release of leukocyte strays giving a false positive result sorry false negative result as concentrated urine high relative density proteinuria glucosuria and some drugs but in these cases you will not find positive leukocyte strays but once you examine the urine under microscopy you will find that uh, it is it will be positive you will find positive microscopic findings that I will mention later, indicating that there is infection. Also, there are other factors. Other factors as alkaline pH and low relative density may stimulate more release of leukocyte strays than normal, giving false positive results. But in these cases, you will find negative microscopy findings. Microscopy will exclude the presence of urinary tract infection. But in general, in general, the reported sensitivity of leukocyte strays for detecting bacteria is variable, but they are specific. Leukocyte strays is specific. It is not good negative, but good positive. The second item regarding urinary dipstick that is related to urinary tract infection is the nitrite. In urine, we have uh, nitrate and we don't have nitrite but in the presence of infection especially gram negative bacteria the gram negative bacteria will produce nitrate reductase that will convert nitrate into nitrite then nitrite will be detected by the urine dipstick one of the limitations of this test uh, that it will not detect all the types of bacteria or organisms. It cannot or it wouldn't detect bacteria with organisms that don't have the biochemical ability to create nitrite reductase. So any bacteria which is not forming nitrite reductase will give negative nitrite test. The most common are enterococci and pseudomonas. Both of them are not forming nitrite reductase. So it is more common with enterobacter species, but it is not common with to be positive with enterococci and pseudomonas. Regarding sensitivity of this of this test is low, whereas specificity is more than 90%. So it is not good negative, but it is good positive. So it, it seems that it, it has the same <coughs> specificity as a leukocyte stress test. The second item in the diagnosis of urinary tract infection is urine microscopy. What are the positive findings that we can find in urine microscopy indicating that there is urinary tract infection? I will comment on three findings in the urine microscopy. The first finding is pyuria can find neutrophils which with its granular cytoplasm and deropilated uh, nucleus as you can see in these images regarding pyuria <coughs> to diagnose urinary tract infection you have 
to find more 10 or more than 10 white blood cells per microliter in urine but this will be suggestive but not diagnostic of urinary tract infection pyuria absence is a good negative but its presence is not a good positive so pyuria is a good negative test its absence excluding the presence of urinary tract infection but it may be present in other scenarios without uh, urinary tract infection so it is not always diagnostic if you find pyuria by its own alone is not diagnostic for urinary tract infection but you have to find other criteria for diagnosis of UTI therefore without pyuria it is unlikely uh, that a patient has a UTI negative pyuria negative pyuria it is difficult to say that the patient has a UTI but if there is pyuria yes the patient may have UTI and maybe not but in absence of pyuria it is very difficult that the patient uh, is uh, having urinary tract infection second point that you can see in microscopy rather than pyuria is cast you can find the leukocyte casts it is uh, characteristic for both acute pyelonephritis and acute interstitial nephritis but we are talking now at, uh, about acute pyelonephritis but it's important to mention that the absence of high blood cell casts shouldn't exclude acute pyelonephritis it is not mandatory to see uh, leukocyte casts in 100% of the uh, pyelonephritis cases the third item that you can see under microscopy that you can see the organism itself you can see the bacteria you can see the yeast and candida uh, fungal infection you can see the uh, organism itself that is causing the urinary tract infection back to the talk outline the third point uh, that we use in uh, diagnosis of urinary tract infection is urine culture it is important to say that the patient has urinary tract infection that the urine culture is positive for more than 10 power 5 colony forming units per ml less than that is considered as contamination so more than 10 power 5 colony forming unit is diagnostic for urinary tract infection the most important point is to ask ourselves when doing urinary culture is indicated is urinary culture indicated for all cases with the urinary tract infection the answer the answer is no urine culture usually is not indicated in most cases of un uncomplicated cystitis and we defined uncomplicated cystitis at the beginning as uh, urinary tract infection in a patient who is not immune compromised and the patient is immune, comp uh, immune competent, competent and uh, there is no abnormalities in the urinary tract but urinary culture is indicated if any of the following is present if the patient has signs or symptoms of upper tract disease or systemic illness i mean here pyelonephritis or if the patient has fever tachycardia hypotension the second indication to do urinary culture if the patient has atypic, atypical symptoms as if the patient has dysuria and at the same time vaginal symptoms that are suggestive of a vaginitis so, so there is a combined etiology here the third point if the patient is at risk at high risk of developing complications this as in cases who are immunocompromised or have urological abnormalities that uh, is what the, we defined uh, at the beginning of the lecture as complicated uh, urinary tract infection the fourth indication to do urinary culture if patient is at risk of infection with multi-drug resistant organism especially if he has a history of infection with with these organisms or if the patient had recent courses of antibiotics or recent hospitalization or these patients are at risk of multi-drug resistant organisms the patient with the history of the same organisms the patient who had recent course of antibiotics or hospitalization and finally urine culture is indicated if there is lack of improvement of or if there is progression of symptoms 
after 48 to 72 hours of initiation of empiric antibiotics in patient who you didn't do a urine culture before. So these are the indications of urine culture in uh, the, these are the indications to do a urine culture in patients with urinary tract infection. So after the diagnosis of urinary tract infection, let's take different uh, presentations of urinary tract infection and talk about each category of them in separate. Let's start by acute uncomplicated cystitis. Uh, acute uncomplicated cystitis, we mentioned that this is urinary tract infection of the bladder in a patient whose immunity is good and there, there is no abnormality in the urinary tract. Uh, the history in these cases is the key method for diagnosis. As we mentioned, that in these cases, we usually we don't need to do a uh, urine culture. In these cases, you will find possible symptoms indicating that there is uh, cystitis. You will find dysuria. Dysuria means burning sensation of urine, urine frequency, frequency urgency, suprapubic pain. The patient says that it feels like a prior treated UTI if the patient has a history of urinary tract infection. And in absence of vaginal symptoms, absence of systemic symptoms, and absence of upper urinary tract symptoms because this will put a patient in another category and you have to do a urine culture. Actually, in acute uncomplicated cystitis, there is no, or it is not required to do the following investigations. If it is an acute uncomplicated cystitis, you are not in need to do urine analysis, urine domestic or urine culture, especially the urine culture. In some areas, they do the urine analysis and urine dipstick, and they may miss the urine culture. As we said, in acute and complicated studies, it is not indicated to give uh, or to do urine culture, except if there, is no, if there is no improvement after 48 to 72 hours of, or if there is uh, appearance of new uh, systemic uh, manifestations. So these diagnostics are not required for all patients, especially the urine culture in cases of acute and complicated cystitis. What are the first line antibiotic management for cases of cystitis? The first line are nitrofurantoin, trimethoprim uh, sulfa uh, mix, uh, mix, uh, methoxazole, uh, phosphomycin. Th those are the first lines for treatment of acute and complicated cystitis. And you can read here the doses and the duration that the patient can take. Regarding oral beta lactams, they can be used only if the first line agents can be used for any reason, for contraindication, for whatever. And regarding ciprofloxacin, it is effective fluoroquinolones, especially ciprofloxacin, which is a common antibiotic that is used in practice for urinary tract infection. It is effective but also it can be used as an alternative antibiotic if uh, other antimicrobials are not available or possible. And usually ciprofloxacin uh, is used more for treatment of pyelonephritis as I'll mention later. So the first line are nitrofurantoin, trimethoprim, sulfa, uh, methoxazole, phosphomycin, followed by oral beta lactam followed by fluoroquinolones, especially ciprofloxacin. As I said, regarding ciprofloxacin, it is effective, but it is used as an alternative. This is due to its uh, the, uh, side effect profile and uh, the increasing rates of quinolone resistance. So as I mentioned, and I mentioned later, uh, ciprofloxacin and the fluoroquinolones are reserved for management of more severe serious infections as pyelonephritis. <coughs> Regarding the uh, second category of urinary tract infection, which is pyelonephritis. What about the diagnosis of pyelonephritis? <coughs> Clinically, the typical symptoms of pyelonephritis we will find the lower urinary tract symptoms as uh, acute uncomplicated cystitis. You will find dysuria, 
you will find uh, urine frequency, urgency, maybe two. But uh, the diagnostic here, the presence of systemic symptoms and the flank pain. You will find flank pain, fever, rigors, and nausea, and vomiting. Because the infection is more systemic and the infection reaches the blood. Regarding the laboratory test, you have to do, in these cases, urine analysis and urine culture. It is recommended for air cases of suspected by unifries. The third point is imaging. Is it important and mandatory uh, to uh, make an imaging to diagnose pyelonephritis? Actually, it is not required for all cases. Not required for all cases. It is enough to diagnose the case by clinical assessment and by urine analysis, the pistic and urine culture. But imaging can be reserved for cases where the patient with pyelonephritis are critically ill or not improving or initial antibiotic management. Also, if you are suspecting obstruction as a stone, you can uh, uh, make an imaging. Also, if there is suspicion that the patient or there is a complication. What are the complications that are suspected in these cases? First, uh, sepsis. If the patient with pyelonephritis is associated with sepsis, if the patient has acute renal failure, if there is evidence that the patient has renal or prenephric abscess, if there is kidney stone, as we mentioned, especially staghorn calliculi, that is common with infection, and if there is suspicion that the patient has emphysematous pyelonephritis, which is a very severe fatal infection. Uh, if you um, decided to make an imaging, what is the best imaging in these cases? Uh, what is the best modality? Uh, CT scan of the abdomen with intravenous contrast is typically the best. But if there is a contraindication to use the contrast in this case, renal ultrasound can be used, but it is less sensitive than CT scan. But as I said, it is a reasonable alternative for these cases, especially if you uh, want to avoid the exposure to contrast or radiation. So the diagnosis of pyelonephritis mainly depends on clinical assessment and laboratory testing, except in some cases that you need to do imaging. Regarding the treatment of pyelonephritis, there is a table that I showed before. Here, here is the treatment of acute complicated cystitis, uncomplicated cystitis, and here is the treatment of pyelonephritis. Let's see. What is the best antibiotic to start with in cases of uh, pyelonephritis? Regarding nitrofurantoin, avoid to use because its penetration to the kidney is very weak and it has suboptimal concentration in renal parenchyma. Regarding trimethoprime, sulfa uh, methoxazole can be used if bacteria are identified to be susceptible. So it is not uh, recommended to be first line. Regarding phosphomycin, again, avoid it as a first line as its penetration to the kidney tissue is very weak and its concentration in renal parenchyma is suboptimal. Regarding oral pectams, oral beta lactams, not recommended also as an initial uh, treatment, but can be used if uh, the bacteria is susceptible for. So beta lactams and trimethoprim can be used if bacteria is susceptible. Try to avoid phosphomycin and nitroferantoin even if the bacteria is susceptible because their penetration to the uh, kidney is very weak. But regarding ciprofloxacin, it is the first line in cases of pyelonephritis. Its penetration of the kidney tissue is very good. It is recommended in patients who are clinically stable and can tolerate oral medications and recommended uh, duration for treatment is seven days provided that the patient is clinically improving. By the way, these are the first line uh, treatment antibiotics in acute uncomplicated cystitis and pyelonephritis. But I think from clinical practice, especially if in your area there is a well-known antibiogram for the uh, different urinary cultures and uh, you know uh, exactly in your area
what is the most sensitive or the most effective antibiotic uh, you can use it if you have a frequent uh, urine cultures with a clear antibiogram suggesting a specific antibiotic to be first line but these are the recommendations or suggestions by international expertise is it important to make uh, or to repeat urine culture to uh, reassure the uh, that the urinary tract infection is disappeared by treatment? The answer is no. Tests for the cure with repeat urine culture is not recommended. Okay, after we discussed acute and complicated cystitis and pyelonephritis, what about asymptomatic bacteria, which by the way is very common? So what is the definition of asymptomatic bacteria? Asymptomatic bacteria is a patient who has an evidence or a laboratory evidence of urinary tract infection. The patient has more than 10 power 5 colony forming unit per mil, but in absence of signs or symptoms of urinary tract infection. So there is no clinical diagnosis of urinary tract infection. So should we treat these cases? The answer is no. The evidence and studies available show that antimicrobial treatment of these cases doesn't show any benefit and it may increase the risk of resistance to antibiotics but there is some situations that we should treat asymptomatic bacteria so in general we shouldn't treat asymptomatic bacteria except in certain situations what are the main situations or indications to treat asymptomatic bacteria first in pregnant women because treatment of asymptomatic bacteria in pregnant women decreases the risk of pyelonephritis and decreases the risk of negative fetal outcomes. The second point, if there is a patient who will undergo urological procedure, which will be associated with significant mucosal bleeding and tumor. The third point, which is debatable, the presence of asymptomatic bacteria in transplanted patients. Actually, there is no enough data available to support the treatment of asymptomatic bacteria in urinary transplant patients. However, there is some data about the importance of management of asymptomatic bacteria one to two months after transplantation. If there is asymptomatic bacteria within the first two months after transplantation. And many centers treat asymptomatic bacteria in this time. But actually, should we screen for asymptomatic bacteria in this period, one to two months after supplantation? The answer is no. Don't routinely screen for uh, UTI in this period. But there is some centers and there is a little evidence that management of asymptomatic bacteria within the first two months, months after transplantation is important. The third point patients with other organ solid organ transplantations uh, don't require treatment for asymptomatic bacteria except for renal patients we said that there is a debate about the treatment of asymptomatic bacteria in the first two months the second point or the uh, fourth point is catheter associated urinary tract infection so what is the diagnostic criteria for catheter associated urinary tract infection the cdc puts definition and criteria to diagnose catheter associated uti the patient must meet all the following three criteria first there is an a catheter in place for more than two consecutive days in an patient location in an inpatient location urine culture with no more than two organisms maximum two organisms and at least one organism of them in culture is uh, with a count more than 10 power 5 colony forming unit per million with the presence of at least one of the following fever suprapubic tenderness close to vertebral angle pain tenderness or tenderness your urgency, your frequency, or this huge. Important point regarding the collection of the of the urine culture. 
Don't collect urine for the urine culture from the old infected catheter, but obtain the urine culture from a newly placed catheter. Why? Because the old long-term catheter may have may has a biofilm that is already a source for bacteria and this may confuse you the bacteria under the biofilm of the catheter may be not the bacteria that is causing the urinary tract infection so remove the old catheter and get a culture from a newly catheter a urine sample from a newly catheter regarding treatment of catheter associated urinary tract infection first it is better to remove the catheter or if it is still needed you can replace the catheter and finally a duration of seven days of antimicrobial th therapy is sufficient provided that the patient improves clinically after starting antibiotics the next point to talk about is how to approach candiduria in a patient with urinary catheter for patients with catheter and candiduria isolated from the urine culture first of all the catheter should be discontinued if possible and then repeat the culture to investigate if candida is still present so you have to remove first the catheter if possible and redo the culture if the catheter, the catheter is still required and you can remove it you can exchange it and obtain new culture from the new catheter to test if candida is still present okay if candida is not isolated so the first culture was contamination if candida is again isolated so you have to determine if is this isolated candida is a contamination colonization of the catheter itself or infection it is for your clinical sense an important point someone may say that uh, if i found pyuria pyuria in this patient so i can expect that the patient is infection is in infection so it is an infection no because not that pyuria is an expected finding in patients who have enduring catheters even in absence of infection so the presence of pyuria is not helpful to differentiate between colonization of the catheter versus infection and as we mentioned before pyuria is a good negative not a good positive whenever as you trying to differentiate it is colonization contamination or infection it's better to do an imaging because the presence of candida in urinary tract infection we have always to assess for the evidence of obstruction or absence of obstruction so you have to do imaging as renal ultrasound or ct abdomen and pelvis and finally treatment of candida uti is only indicated in the following situation if there is persistent candiduria i mean in the second uh, culture in patient who have symptoms consistent with uti and there is no alternative etiology explaining this urinary tract infection as example the presence of bacteriuria so this is how to handle candiduria in patients with urinary catheter so we discuss now approaching candiduria in a patient with urinary catheter what about candiduria in patient without urinary catheters so to approach a candiduria in patient without urinary catheter we have to do the following first again repeat the culture through a clean catch urine sample to see if candida is isolated again uh, and if uh, if it is applicable and possible the patient must be assessed for the presence of con concurrent vaginitis if candida is isolated again you will do an imaging uh, to assess if there is obstruction and finally treatment also here is only indicated if the patient has uh, if the patient has signs and symptoms consistent with urinary tract infection
Exception to this management approach include patients undergoing urological procedure, neutropenic patients for which asymptomatic candiduria should be treated. So you have to repeat the culture. If candida is rated again, don't treat except if there is symptoms, except in these patients, you have to treat asymptomatic candiduria. Who are these patients? Patients undergoing urological procedure and neutropenic patients. Finally, and the last point is recurrent urinary tract infection. Recurrent urinary tract infection can be found in different patients with different risk factors. Let's talk about each category. What about recurrent urinary tract infection in premenopausal married women? There is a well known association between recurrent UTI and sexual activity related to spermicidal contraceptives. So, women who use spermicidal contraceptives. As we mentioned, spermicidal contraceptives are risk factor for UTI, as we mentioned at the beginning of the lecture. So, in these women who have recurrent urinary tract infection and are using spermicidal contraceptives, it is better to use different agent to avoid this recurrent UTI. Other some behavior modifications are suggested, but actually it is not clear uh, if they have. Uh, a good benefit uh, to prevent recurrent UTI, but uh, there, is, there is no harm to try them. Make the woman to try early voiding after sexual intercourse and or increase the hydration. This to precipitate more frequent urination. Okay, but as I said, uh, it is not clear if they uh, will be effective. Okay. The, se the second category with recurrent UTI, postmenopausal women, uh, especially if this patient has associated incontinence, you have to make a pelvic examination to exclude pelvic floor dysfunction or prolapse because they may precipitate for recurrent urinary tract infection. And if there is no correctable anatomical issue, the patient has no incontinence, the patient pelvic floor is good, and there is no prolapse, then it is advised to give vaginal estrogen. The next category is, what if Postmenopausal woman or premenopausal woman that still have recurrent UTI, although following these instructions. What are the other interventions that we can use in these cases? Regarding sexually active women, we can use postcoital antibiotics, and the most well studied agent is trimethoprim sulfa methoxazole. Also, a continuous prophylaxis can be used. It is shown to be effective in clinical trial, but it is important to know that the efficacy is lost once the prophylaxis is stopped and urinary tract infection may be recurrent. And it is not always that prophylaxis is 100% effective. UTI may still present and be recurrent even if the patient is on antibiotic itself. But it may be a line that you can beat that you can try if the patient followed all the other lines of prevention and they failed. Finally, the utilization of supplements as cranberry extracts and demon nose have been tried in some trials and some individuals may find benefit but the data are mixed and not sufficient to strongly recommend them finally regarding men recurrent uti in men must be followed by searching for underlying structure issue usually these men have underlying uh, pathology or underlying 
abnormal anatomy so you have to search for that or they are having uh, indwelling catheter with recurrent UTI but in absence of indwelling catheter the recurrent UTI men must be followed by a good search for underlying structural issues my home messages are the reported sensitivity of leukocyte estrays for detecting a bacteria is variable but it is specific which means it is a good positive test the same for nitrite it is a good positive test pyuria absence is a good negative but but its presence is not a good positive the absence of high blood cell casts shouldn't exclude acute polynephritis, especially if there is a reasonable clinical suspicion. Urine culture is not indicated in most cases of uncomplicated cystitis, but may be indicated in other situations. Nitroferentoin, trimethoprim, uh, sulfamethoxazole, phosphomycin are first line in management of uncomplicated cystitis. Ciprofloxacin is not first line in management of uncomplicated cystitis due to side effects and increasing rates of resistance. In pyelonephritis, urine analysis and culture are mandatory for diagnosis, while imaging is necessary only in certain cases. Asymptomatic bacteriuria should be treated only in pregnant women or pre-urosurgery associated with significant mucosal bleeding and trauma. Asymptomatic bacteriuria treatment in the first one to two months after renal transplant is debatable. Catheter associated UTI, you have to remove or to replace the catheter, then do a culture, then give antibiotics for seven days. Candituria, if the patient is on catheter, remove or replace the catheter. Then, if the patient was on catheter or not, obtain new culture. If new culture is positive, so imaging is indicated to assess obstruction. Treat if symptomatic only, but treat if asymptomatic in patients undergoing urological procedures and in neutropenic patients. Thank you for watching this lecture and see you in the coming lectures.